actually a little more of a technical aspect, um, as well as the social side of collaboration. And so instead of calling this the collaborative drug discovery platform, which we have, uh, I talk about the collaborative drug discovery paradigm. And the paradigm involves both uh, a lot of uh, technology for collaboration, but also a lot of psychology for collaboration. And this platform is a matter of basic credibility of one the IoIT Best Practices Award. And what it does is it allows anyone anywhere to work uh, with very different IP and data sharing requirements. And so the more we have data sharing, partitioning, security, privacy, uh, we ironically find the more that people are able to, within their natural workflows, work together. And I believe this is the key to changing around the inefficiencies we've seen in drug discovery relative to the software, hardware, and internet industries, because it balances the privacy and security needed when someone may have the next million dollar drug uh, with the thing that this entire conference is about, which is our collaboration of different brains working together. So uh, another thing that uh, uh, Keenan asked me to do was to make this a little personal, even though uh, I am uh, going via this, uh, uh, the electrons through the go-to meeting. And so uh, I put uh, my bio here. Uh, the way I thought that I would introduce this is Larry Bach is introducing the overall uh, session uh, was just to mention some of the parallels. I believe he invested in uh, pharmacopoeia, and I was working with John Elman in graduate school on the first papers for uh, making libraries uh, of small molecules, benzodiazepine, uh, at around the uh, same time. And then in industry, worked at Aris Access Pharmaceuticals, at Zipana, which was another company uh, of many that he was involved in that had success. Uh, I spoke at a Gordon conference, which made me think of the research that everyone was doing, and met uh, Tony Zarek, who he um, was involved in, in it disputed uh, Illumina over uh, discrimination. And in any case, um, this company is a, a spin out of Eli Lilly, a library that built databases based on all the literature. And here, the idea was to be able to work with every small uh, VC funded startup or academic, uh, handling the complexity of all their scientific data in a, a secure collaborative way. These videos here are from founders like you, and it gives a lot more uh, detail on uh, what, what the uh, culture and mission is. So, uh, also, the other way I thought I would do this personally. <laughs> 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 this is my I gave some uh, labels to it. And so, what's kind of interesting about this connection between data and people. And so, at CDD, for example, we're very good at handling all sorts of data, chemical structures, biological activity. And, here it's sort of the intersection of data with the social. So one of these are uh, many of you in the audience. If folks um, aren't connected, you know, it may be that if I, I can help you or you can help me or one of my connections can help you and vice versa. So just thinking about uh, it's reading a book on creativity called Imagine uh, How Creativity Works, a great book that just came out. <coughs> Successful entrepreneurs often have lots of weak points. Usually we have like four to seven people that are real trusted allies in our life. Um, here are these uh, problems that we're solving. And, and what's interesting is that we've been working in a very competitive space, uh, what Steve Blank calls being an honest broker. And this is helping with the software for drug discovery and going out and honestly selling it and honestly getting money for it. And that's very hard, challenging business. Um, you're not going to sell the software to every person in the world, obviously. Um, but you know, we, we were winning, and we're getting competitive relative to the rest of the world um, alternative. There's also something called a pivot in um, the lean startup movement, where you take an idea, and it's sort of a 90 degree pivot. But what we realize is that the funding for drug discovery is really a jugular issue for pretty much every lab. And because we've won six grants from the Gates Foundation, NIH, the EU, and because we never want to own the drug discovery data on that IP, we're hosting it in the cloud, we need to be sort of a neutral Switzerland. We can really complement the folks uh, where we do the uh, informatics and they do the wet lab and own the IP. As long as it keeps making the tool and the platform better, it's very win-win. So um, our business model and really is 
a collaborative business model that helps our customers more than ourselves. I kind of, the analogy I mentioned is the airline industry, uh, other than Southwest. Uh, it obviously has a huge multiplier effect for the economy. So the collaborative platform is interesting in that it lets organizations do more with less resources because you can have a spin out of an academic lab with some startup uh, scientists working with the CRO and, uh, across the ocean and the big farm that they're partnering with all through one software. Uh, just logging in mode, no, no, no uh, hardware installed, no software installed, and a perfect security record. We can push that envelope in areas that benefit all projects with solo grants with one half dozen. And then this phenomenon of the long tail. That's, that's something which I was reading about in another book called Here Comes Everyone, The Power of Organizing Without Organization. So those are the two books that I think are relevant to this um, session. And the idea of the long tail is even though <clears throat> folks think about like you know, Amazon, the Stephen King novels, the famous ones, if you look at the area under the curve of all the little books, that's greater than the area under the curve of the big ones. Um, the same thing happens with Wikipedia edits. Uh, there are these power laws or even keywords on Google searches. There's a few big winners and then lots of smaller ones. But if you look at all of the smaller ones, uh, an example was made if you were uh, 20 years ago to invest the same amount of money at Merck or in the top 2,000 biotechs, so we'd do better with the little ones. Um, so for us, this is where we've gotten very good because we have a collaborative platform sharing the data. We can also uh, use that to come up with projects, but we have to be really picky in terms of which projects we partner with. So our core business is a software as a service, much like Salesforce, right up to VCs, I'll say, um, instead of uh, customer prospects like Salesforce, we do drug prospects to advance one up to an IMD. And we handle very core for composition matter and utility patents. Uh, so folks have to get comfortable that it's secure. That was more of an issue eight years ago. Folks thought it was crazy to host data like this in the cloud. But it's also collaborative to scale. So we work with hundreds of scientists with the Gates Foundation or the NIH or Big Pharma's where um, they want to go beyond their four walls. And now with 100% of the security record, it's going up all the time. I can easily see this game for 100,000 logins. We also have the moral high ground because we started from day one working on neglected disease that affect the poorest people in the world, like malaria, African sleeping sickness, Chagas disease. With the Gates Foundation, our plans are on tuberculosis, which one in three people have. Um, there's latent TB in the lungs, there's drug resistance, there's a six month regimen, uh, which is really bad if you have to hike uh, 10 miles to get medicines. So there's real humanitarian needs there. And on these grants, we focus on things that people aren't even thinking about, like uh, how do people collaborate around data, or how do people just collaborate. Um, on the grant storming, what's nice about this is we're working with a lot of the top academics, whether it's Harvard, Broad, MIT, Cornell, Columbia, Johns Hopkins, uh, Brian Roth at University of North Carolina has 47,000 KIs and 699 gene protein coupled receptors, 40% drug to GPCRs and CDD public, we have the chemical searchable way, um, UCSF, Stanford, UCLA on the West Coast, even given talks at the University of Mississippi and University of Texas. So we have collaborators all over the place. And what we can do is we can pick the best people at collaborating to work on grants together uh, and do this in a way that's highly ethical and highly synergistic. But what's interesting is it's not just how smart the person is that matters. Obviously, you know, we're attracted to their intelligence. But it's how good a teaming partner are they? Uh, how fast are, do they respond to emails? How hard is it to set up a meeting? That sort of thing. And for us, uh, we want to work on things that are innovative on the informatic side, ideally that impact neglected disease as well as commercial. So we're not really going to head with the company uh, and we can, we can think long term because we have positive protection. So what we're doing is, in, you know, this is fairly new. Potential to set up a very scalable virtuous cycle where the more people that we sell the platform to, and really it's just a login and password, so it's very um, cost efficient and fast, easy to buy, easy to sell. Uh, for the software, the more we can pick and choose to people to partner with on the research side and harvest the gems from these ideas. But you have to be able to work in a collaborative way. And so that means in these meetings, we have these very intense 30 minute meetings where 
will really take our good ideas and try to make them great. And then we can use that to make the product. And when you're in this situation, everyone thinks they have the best idea for you to do, and it's like putting drugs in the clinic. You can't do every one. You can only do a few. Because uh, we do the software with high quality, so we have five lines of curate code for one line of production code, 10,000 lines of automated tests each field. Um, so we really uh, need to be picky in choosing that, which is most aligned with the product market fit, but at the same time, most aligned with the drug projects that people are working on are most, most interesting to do. So it's exciting, though, because uh, basically we can get three times the amount of money for the same amount of work on the software, our own grants and our partners. That helps more smart. So my message to everybody, uh, whether working with us or not, is that the more collaboration you can do, the better you leverage your time, and that's the one finite resource we all have on this planet, the more efficient we are. And what's nice about the internet is that it gives a new way to do this. And for us, the technology is the key to emphasize the security and privacy, even on a subconscious level, we call it the CDD call. Uh, but really, down to the individual batch of the molecule, or KI, at IC50, you can partition data. It works, and it works even better uh, when we uh, find ways to collaborate on the people side as well as the technology side. So, you know, Julian was asking me what would I hope comes out of this. What I hope comes out of this is one person or, you know, one interesting project that we can collaborate with someone on, either via email or LinkedIn or via key. And um, so we have Chris Lipinski, who's probably the most famous key informatics scientist, provided the first set of known drugs in our CBD public database. For everyone public data, there's 20 times as much private data, which is a real luminary and big name. Um, and here's some examples with a spin out working uh, with the CRO in China uh, and the right huge tech inhibitors raised 27 million. And we are working with them when they just had angel financing. This NIH neuroscience blueprint is very interesting. We're working with AMRI, Southern Research, and SRI International, the seven leading academics, and a number of big ex pharma. Uh, heads of CMS, now that farm is not doing as much CMS. We're very proud of our work on elective disease. Um, not only we won one or two, but three grants with the building of the Gates Foundation. Delivering this MM4TB includes you know, the Adventist grants and AstraZeneca India, all working in the ball, whether they um, with these projects to partition data, perhaps um, masking structures if needed. With Rockefeller, there's one screening center, they don't want to upload the chemical library microtiter plants 20 times. They upload it once, then they can tag it for the 20 different professors with their data and so on and so forth. Um, here's the NIH blueprint where startups and uh, leading academics are working on Guterres disease and other education. Here's the MM4 TV, literally 25 different companies and universities all working together as one. Here we are, it's really every continent. TV, uh, three of these. Initially, we were supporting hundreds, now it's three academics with three big pharmas. Uh, this is an example of overcome the resistance to chloroquine uh, with the substructure that Chivali, uh, Professor Chivali found that was in graph mill. And uh, in any case, the, the point of this, I want to uh, wrap up for time, but there was private private sharing between UCSF in South Africa and public data uh, with the known drugs. We found compounds in combination that would reverse the resistance sevenfold, both new compounds as well as known drugs that could save you know, years or decades off of the timeline. So lots of academic industry collaborators, data partitioning uh, based on the user privileges. We now have the network we're neutral Switzerland in this, and we don't own any IP, which allows us to be a very good collaborator for either the software or the grants. And I think that's it. We want to take good ideas to great.